Hey guys, Mars Engine here, bringing another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video. And so the third and final EZA that got announced for part one of the anniversary that is live uh, in because of the data download, it's not live in the game, comes out on Monday, uh, but is live on uh, the private server because it is in the data download, is the Int, Broly and Paragus. So we are going to be taking a look at them here. Now, these guys have the potential to be very, very interesting. Um, although their biggest drawback really is the fact that they're only on two categories, which is pure Saiyans and joined forces. Um, however, I've already seen like people talking about there's been a clip of them without a leader skill uh, being able to tank reasonably well, similarly to like how people were using LR Bulma uh, when she first came out. And uh, obviously I'll explain the reason why here again, because it's on the private server, it's all in Japanese. So I've got the details up here on the other monitor. So their super attack effect is that they infinitely stack defense. They do supreme damage to the enemy and they lower attack. And then their passive is attack and defense 150%. High chance of launching an additional super attack when performing a super. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the guaranteed attack that has a chance to become a super. So it's either a super or nothing. Um, but then they reduce damage received by 26% with each super attack performed within the turn. Then they give pure Saiyans or joined forces allies 3 key and attack and defense 50%. Then they get key 3, attack 100% and a high chance of launching another super attack when there is a pure Saiyans or superheroes category enemy. So this is very interesting when you consider we are finally getting content against uh, super class enemies. And of course, pure Saiyans can be super or extreme. So against any new Broly events or Turles or anything like that. And then, yeah, superheroes enemies. So that is actually quite good. Uh, the extra attack and key is what it is, right? They're mainly a support unit. So them doing a little bit of extra damage is fine. But it's the fact that it's another high chance to launch an additional super. So on their best RNG turn, they could do four super attacks, which means they would have 104% damage reduction. So they wouldn't, it literally is impossible for them to take damage. Um, even on a turn where they only do three super attacks, they have 78% damage reduction, which is obviously very good, coupled with the fact that they're stacking defense. Um, so yeah, like on paper, they definitely seem like they could be very, very good. Uh, we're running them on the Turles team here. Uh, they have one 200% leader, which I think is like the AGL Metal Cooler Super Saiyans because they're joined forces and pure Saiyans. So any of the teams you're realistically going to want to run them on, they're only going to be getting a 170 lead at best, which is a little bit unfortunate, but you obviously want to be running them with pure Saiyans or joined forces characters in order to get that support. So I've made kind of like an extreme pure Saiyans team here for the most part with Turles because we'll be able to get Turles' intro. We've jumped into the blue zone. Unfortunately, he's not on this turn. So obviously, we're not going to get the intro buff active from Turles here. So we've got four links active, Saiyan Warrior Race, Saiyan Lineage, Prepared for Battle and Fierce Battle. They do have Cold Judgment. So if you're able to get that active with other characters, then obviously they have uh, an extra 25% defense from that link. Um, now, remember, their stats are all on super. So they get 150% attack and defense when supering. So their defense is going to jump up here to, what, like nearly 200k, which is not a lot. But then, of course, they get the 30% on their super, so that will put them over 200k. It's an infinite stack, so if we get additionals, the defense keeps going up. But the most important thing is the more supers they do, the more damage reduction they get. Now, it is only within the turn, so, of course, you have the possibility to go into, you know, a difficult event, and then they just do, like, one super attack, and then they get hit with a super and get destroyed. But... You obviously also have the possibility that they're going to get multiple additional supers and then they'll just be tanking everything. Like I said, on the God RNG turn where they get four supers, they are actually invincible because they have over 100% damage reduction, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, apparently this Goku can be sealed in phase one. Funnily enough, I haven't actually tried out any of these uh, super class enemy stages yet. Um, so yeah, I wasn't sure which one. I looked at the stats to see sort of how hard they hit and everything. Um, and I thought this would be a good one just because it has a lot of phases. Uh, the enemy can hit a bit harder as we get closer to the end. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we get on. So 7 million attack. Obviously nothing crazy, but we're not expecting big attack stats out of them. But we did get two supers. So we got double defensive stack. So they were probably up to somewhere around 250k. But then they also had 52% damage reduction, which... I mean, if we're talking about something like Dismal Future Red Zone, right, where Zamasu's supering you for over a million on the first turn, 
then they're still going to be taking a chunk of damage from that kind of super attack. But obviously now that we're able to start stacking defense, um, we're going to look much better as the turns go on. Obviously there's no support on this turn. They do link up pretty nicely with Turles. And obviously him appearing on... Actually both of them are on the next rotation, which is a bit awkward. But I guess at least he is sealed now. Um, so now both of the Turles uh, intros have gone off. So I guess we can probably get away with Turles in slot one here. He's not got the craziest slot one defense, but at least this Goku is sealed. So at least he can't super. How much damage does he actually do with his normals? Yes, he's still doing 100k, but that's all right. We can uh, weather that storm. <laughs> it's not the craziest damage. Uh, unfortunate to get both Turleses on turn one because my slot one units for this setup are going to be God Goku and then um, probably, well... I was going to say maybe AGL Broly. Like, Int Broly would be kind of good in this stage because he's actually going to be able to get some stacks. He's still a unit that I'm, like, really excited for him to get his easy A. Now that we're starting to get uh, difficult content against, like, Goku and Vegeta enemies as well. So he has the chance to really start, like, building and, you know, he's going to look really, really good. So largely, we're going to have a lot of these extreme characters just floating to provide links to Paragus and Broly. So we've got Saiyan Warrior Race prepared for Battle Fierce Battle. Uh, what are they up to now, start of turn? Yes, they're up to 120 already when it was, what, 77 on the previous turn. So now on Super, they get 150%. So they're going to jump up to, what, like 250, 260 uh, straight away here. Um, and then the Super Attack, we're going to put them over 300. Uh, depending on how many Super Attacks they get, of course, will determine how much damage reduction they have. So let's see how we get on here. Can't be sealed anymore. So I'll go ahead and do this, and then we'll do this. We have type advantage, so this is a good turn. Hopefully they can get some uh, additionals here. We did get one additional super last turn, but remember, even without the hidden potential, against a pure Saiyan, from their passive alone, they have the chance to get three supers. But it is unfortunate that it is just super or nothing, because of course, as we know, if characters do an additional normal that could have been a super but wasn't, at least they're doing an additional attack which then has more of a chance to help trigger the hidden potential. Whereas these guys, it's super or nothing. So, yeah, see, they did one super. Which, in the grand scheme of things, obviously very bad, right? We only got one stack on our defense, and then they only have 26% damage reduction. Which I say only, like, 26% is still good. I mean, in this stage against a tech boss, we obviously still took double digits from a normal. But that's the kind of turn where, if you're in a more difficult event, then obviously they could potentially just get killed. Um, so I think when you're thinking about their hidden potential build, you probably want to go with just only additional and dodge. It's no surprise for me to say that, right? They are a support unit. They're not on the team to do damage. Um, you want them to get those additional supers to get the damage reduction. You also want, you know, if they're not going to get enough supers, you want them to be able to potentially dodge. They are an int unit, so they start with level 5 dodge already anyway. So I can't remember what, the, I think it's, you can get up to 15 in a stat that they don't have any, uh, like that isn't one of the ones they get from their typing, right? So you can get up to like 15 additional, and then I think it's like 11 dodge. And then obviously with skill orbs on top of that, you can lean more into one or the other, depending on how you want to do it. That's what I'd probably do. Like I say, no point giving them crit. This is a showcase setting, so we're keeping them on rotation, but most of the time you are just going to be using them as a third slot floating unit. So I probably wouldn't bother too much with, uh, you know, having to get crit because, like I say, they're not they're not on the team to do damage. So I feel like for their, this unit in particular, every point in crit is kind of like a wasted point in their hidden potential. But we'll see how we get on here. Obviously, the more supers they get, the more stacks they get. So it's not just the defense, uh, the damage reduction within the turn. It's the stacking defense as well. And if their passive is going to let you down and they're not doing any additional attacks, you want the hidden potential uh, additional to have as much chance to proc as possible. Um, so yeah, maybe I would lean more towards additional. It's going to be one of those things where you just never know how the turn's going to play out. Like if they get multiple additional supers, then they don't need the dodge. If they don't get multiple additional supers, then they ideally want more dodge. But you never know what's going to happen until the turn plays out, right? Because if you build them more leaning towards dodge, and then you get that, like, triple super turn, they're not really going to need to dodge much. I mean, maybe the hardest hitting, like, physical boss would probably kill them with a super still, potentially. Um, but yeah, like, 
I think you're uh, mostly going to want to lead towards additionals. Make sure you get that super. Even if they get one additional from their passive to go off, it gives you that extra chance. And hopefully you then do get the hidden potential additional as well. But of course, you've got to remember, hidden potential, even if you go like full additional, they could still just get an additional normal, which then is obviously not giving them any extra stacks or any extra damage reduction. So something to be aware of for sure. Um, this will be a good rotation for them now. We've got the... Uh, we got the uh, Turles in slot 3 for some extra links. He has Brutal Beatdown. Um, the thing always super slows down when you click on the links. So I'm going to have to be prepared for that here. I want to see Brutal Beatdown at level 10. I don't know why it always slows down so badly, but I just want to check. I think it is mostly just attack, which obviously for this particular rotation we don't really care too much about. Yeah, 15% attack. But I mean, it's helping out for um, Turles himself, of course. So, they're at 141k now, which means on super, they're getting, what, an extra 210, something like that? So, 350 plus the 30% from their hidden potential, uh, from their super attack. So, they're going up to about 400k here with then 26% damage reduction if they just get one super, which is pretty good. So, we'll do this, do this. I'm a little bit worried about the friend Turles, because obviously the friends on here are... A bit bugged at the moment. He definitely could take some damage. Although he's going to super straight away. Which is actually really good for us. Um, it's so crazy. Like I'm, I'm really enjoying this now. With the idea of having these super class bosses. I'm a bit late to the party. Because like I said. I haven't done any videos. Or really any attempts on this stage yet. But it's kind of cool putting this team together. right? Running double Turles leads. With a super saiyan. Uh, pure saiyan's lead. We can throw god Goku on here. Because he's just a mega tank against pure saiyans. He only gets the 170 lead from Turles. But that's all he needs. Um, and then, yeah, this team's able to cook with some super class characters on there, like the GT duo as well. Yes, see, only one super again. That's so disappointing. Because then they take 28k from a normal. Whereas even just one more super, with the extra damage reduction and the little bit of extra defense, they would have tanked that for double digit damage. So, that definitely is uh, disappointing. I very much wish that they'd made it oh, 350. Are you serious? Turles, bruh. I really wish they'd made it additional normal that could become a super, but let's uh, jump back in here. Get some. Uh, we'll start from a later turn, get some more stacks. Right, so we're back here at the AGL God Goku phase. Uh, we've gotten a few stacks in with our boys here, so they are. Uh, this is a really good rotation for them. Every link active except for Cold Judgment, and they're at 214k defense. Now, remember, they get 150% on super. So they're going to go up to 500 plus the uh, super attack effect as well. So we're still easily talking like 550 if they only get one super. So that should be pretty good with the little bit of damage reduction. I've got to be honest though. I'm a little bit scared about this turn because of the uh, Broly in slot 1. If he immediately supers, I'm pretty sure Int Broly's going to get killed. Because uh, he's gotten a few stacks off, but he doesn't exactly have uh, crazy defense here. And he gets extra damage reduction after he attacks. So, uh, slot one super would be bad. Okay. Whew. We live. I mean, the friend Turles could still get clapped here, but I'm also just want to see the performance from uh, the um, Paragus and Broly anyway, right? So, we'll see how we go here. We've got a couple of turns where they've gotten, like, one extra super. So, this isn't them at, like, their max potential. But, I mean, they're at 10 million attack now, thanks to the domain from AGL Broly that transformed on the previous turn. Uh, they got an additional normal. That means that will be from the hidden potential. So that means they're not getting any extra supers from their passive. But they're already able to take double digit damage from God Goku here from the normal attack. So that is actually pretty good. Uh, the friend Turles here. I think his passive might be fully built up to have like the extra damage reduction and everything. So if he gets enough supers here, he should be able to tank normals okay. But, I mean, God Goku hasn't supered, so if he's going to super this turn, Turles is going to get absolutely destroyed. But, I think after a triple super here, we, we should be okay, maybe? <laughs> I don't know, we took a lot of damage in slot one, so if God Goku supers, though, it's all over. Okay, well, there you go. But there you go, Broly and Paragus definitely look very, very good. I'm interested to try them out on some other builds and everything. It's just, the downside, as I said at the start, is that they're only on pure Saiyans and joined forces. But they support both those categories, so they're obviously going to be very useful on those teams. And then with the release of all this new super class enemy content, the fact that they get their extra buff against uh, pure Saiyans or superheroes means that they're going to be very, very good uh, in those scenarios. 
It's just unfortunately, as we saw in this video, if you do get those turns where you get like one super, they're obviously not going to be that great at tanking from the uh, bosses. Whereas if you get the turns where they get loads of supers, they're going to be super, super good defensively. So they are very much a hit or miss like RNG sort of unit. But I do really like their EZA. I think if I had to uh, compare them, because we've already done the showcase for them, I would say even though their teams are more limited, I think I would say they're a much better EZA than Bardock and Gine, unfortunately, because I really wanted that unit to be good. And they're just kind of okay. But I say these guys are pretty good. It's just a shame they're only on the uh, couple of teams, right? Like they're not on the new AGL Broly's leader skill at all because they're not on super bosses, transformation boost or full power, which is unfortunate because they would be really good on his team. So a bit of a shame, but obviously you can run them on some other builds. I mean, like the um, Tech Merge Zamasu team, they'd be getting double 150 leads. Now they wouldn't be buffing many units on his team unless you were bringing like Join forces LRs like Rose and Zamasu, uh, any extreme pure Saiyans like Broly. Um, but they, they could kind of work there under a double 150 lead. But again, they would really be relying on additional supers on that team. But let me know what you guys think of Paragus and Broly down below. Really wish they'd put them on movie bosses and super bosses. Even if, uh, you know, Paragus is there and he's not really the movie boss. I think that would have made this card so much better. But it is what it is. So let me know your thoughts uh, down there below. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Masked Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for the Discord and the merch store and I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.